Hello and welcome to this short video about Jaguar XK8 interior temperature sensor. This is video 99 in my series of XK8 videos. In this video I'm going to show you how I remove my driver's side lower bolster and clean the interior temperature sensor. Now this all came about because I found something very interesting in you and yours Jaguar XK8, Nigel Thornley's book. There was a mention about the temperature sensors becoming dirty so off I went off on another tangent. I wasn't actually thinking about the temperature sensor until I read this in his great book that I've recently bought. If you're interested in that book, I've done a video, um, it's video 100, there should be a link up in the right hand corner. Super book, take a look at it. Um, so off on a tangent I went uh, and started looking at cleaning my temperature sensor. So I've done a quick video uh, in six sections in this case, section one, the sensor problems, what I'm trying to fix. Section two, removing it. Section three, cleaning the sensor. Section four, refitting. Section five, I found an easier way of cleaning it after I've done it, which I'll share with you. Section six, the bolster pocket feature. A bit of a interesting feature of the bolster pocket. Not all, not everybody will, will uh, understand or know about it. N not, not amazing, but it is interesting. So keep watching to the end, basically. If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in Jaguar XK8s or Jaguar XKRs, X100s. If you are, might I su suggest you subscribe to my channel by pressing the rectangular red subscribe button with subscribe written on it, clicking the bell to be reminded when videos are aired, and click the thumbs up if you like the video or thumbs down if you don't. And if you have any questions or comments, and, uh, please ask them in the comment section below the video. Okay then, section one, the sensor problems. So, since I had this particular XK8, I've noticed um, the temperature setting on the air conditioning unit or the EVAP or whatever um, has always been, uh, it's always been a lot cooler in the cabin than, this, than it was set. And I had to set, I've had to set it at some wildly high temperature to get it reasonably warm. It's always, the air conditioning is actually working and it's always been chilly. So there's obviously something wrong and I've been trying to track down, not, not massively uh, a big problem, uh, especially if you live in the UK. But I thought, having seen that thing in Nigel's book, I thought, oh, we'll give this a go. So where is the sensor located? It's actually to the left hand side of the steering wheel on a right hand drive car behind that little grill. You'll see there. And this is my temperature before and after I've cleaned it, give you some idea of what we're trying to achieve. Um, it's an interesting concept, this temperature sensor. It's actually, there's actually a motorized aspirator. Um, so basically, the idea of this in, this is the uh, cabin air, the, I've circled the sensor in red. This is actually um, the sensor housing there. Cabin air is drawn through the grill over the sensor uh, which is a thyristor, thermistor, sorry. Um, and it's actually drawn by a little um, motor, a little um, aspirator motor, which draws the air past the um, sensor. Really overly complicated, but uh, it is what it is. And that drives a signal uh, used by the um, ACCM to adjust the temperature, the airflow, air distribution for the air conditioning unit. So it's, it's quite a critical part of the air con. So it needs to be cleaned, to be honest. So the motorized aspirate assembly line looks actually like this. The motor, there's two types. There's a different one for left hand drive to right hand drive. The part number's there, MJA6551AA for right hand drive and BA for left hand. You've got the tube, uh, which connects the little pump motor to the uh, sensor housing. The tube is maj 6552 AA. The sensor housing, which is actually a fixed unit, is MJA6552 AA. And the grill itself, uh, which is part of the trim, is uh, GJA611 AA plus the three letters for the trim color code. So section two then, removing. You need to remove the lower bolster first. The lower bolster obviously is the, the main bit of trim underneath the steering wheel, uh, you can see there. 
let's have a look at the bolster before we do anything. The bottom of the bolster is fixed via these two slots and the fixings are slotted so you don't necessarily have to take them out all the way. There's not a hole, there's a slot. If you look at the other side, uh, sorry, just go, oh, my storage pockets come out. If I look at the other side now, you'll see this, oh, this is the right hand side grill. There's nothing actually behind that grill, the one by the valet button, as you can see there. Absolutely nothing there, it's blank. The other side, however, is uh, the aspirator assembly. And you'll see the grill is slightly obscured by the temperature sensor. You can see straight through the other one. So you know you got the right one if you can actually physically just about see the sensor behind it, although it's a bit dirty. And finally the clips there, you can see the clips at the top, um, sorry, to the right hand side there, the clip high is, uh, the sort of uh, uh, feature there. So the fasteners on the bol lower bolster, uh, if you're interested, the bolster part numbers, left hand and right hand are different again. You've got GJB 6009 for left hand AA, right hand is 6008 AA, again the three figure trim colour code. The storage pocket, again left and right hand drive is different, is GJA uh, 6121 or 6120 and again three digits for the trim code. And you can see the fasteners there, you've got two slots for the lower fasteners which are screws and you've got two um, spring clip um, sort of um, fingers that uh, engage with the stream cl clips in the actual um, uh, dash trim. So to remove the lower or remove or loosen, you don't have to remove them, the, um, the uh, lower screws you need a T25 Torx and there's t you'll f when you actually have a look there's two screws it's always the inner one you need to remove the outer one is about the actual trim itself the dash trim the left hand side that again choose the inner one not the outer one then finally just to disengage the upper clips you just have to lift it up slightly and it should just come away oh like that it's dropped out altogether it's not held in very tightly um, and there you go. So actually then it will be connected by two electrical connectors. One is the valley uh, button connector. I couldn't take this off uh, by uh, one-handed. It's got two clips either side of the electrical connector which is quite unusual so you need to depress both of them to pull them out. It's quite easy once you've depressed both but just a little tip it's got two on that one. On the aspirator connector, the other electrical connector, you just have to, it's a more simple, it's got the single uh, clip to, cl uh, to push down and it pulls straight out. Very, very easy. You've got the aspirator now, you need to put it, pull it apart a little bit, take the connect, uh, connector off for the, um, the temperature sensor. Again, push the clip down, pull it off, as you can see there. Then I need to remove the rubber hose from the uh, sensor end and also the aspirator end. It's very easy, it just pulls straight off. It's no big deal. There you go. Now, to actually get the temperature sensor housing off, it's quite difficult. It, that's why I'd like to explain how, it engage, how it's fixed. Basically, there's four holes on the housing, you can see there. Uh, which actually engage with four tabs on the grill and you can see they, they, they can be depressed out of the way so you've got to get a small screwdriver in and just push them out of the way and it will just pull the grill straight off. Once you've done that, I wasn't able to show it on camera, it just comes away very easily and there you've got your dirty temperature sensor, Pyrista. Very tricky to get off that, couldn't, sh couldn't show you that properly on video, I apologise. Section three then, cleaning the sensor. Very, very straightforward. First of all, let's have a look at the resulting dust. 25 years of somebody's dust. Hmm. There's only about four years of mine on there, but very, 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 very dusty. And I can't imagine that's giving a good temperature reading. Whether it's the cause of my problem, I don't know, but it can only help. So what I did was literally use some compressed air. I'm lucky to have a compressor. And one or two quick blasts and it's gone. I don't want to use, lose my phone bit. Take that out of the way for a minute. There you go. 
a bit more of a blast. Look at that. All gone. 25 years of dust. Gone in a second. Jobs are good. Un. I've used the clamp there just to hold it because I'm very, I'm very poor at doing single-handed videos. Uh, the result after a short blast with air, with compressed air, not got quite all the, the dust off. A little bit of cleaning with a cloth will get rid of that, I think. But very pleased. Looks almost new. I did actually take a point of uh, make a point of cleaning the uh, rubber hose with compressed air again. Because there was dust all the way through the system. Oh, lost it. <laughs> Oops. Oh, dear. And also the aspirator fan itself. Whoa, there's bits going everywhere, yeah? That, I can see, that's obviously working because it's spinning around quite freely. Just going to give it another quick blast. Make sure all the, air, the uh, dust is gone. Yeah. Good as new. Well, as clean as new, whether it's good as new, is another thing. Okay, so section four then, refitting. Very, very easy. It's basically the opposite of disassembly, as they say in the, the Haynes manuals. And it goes together very, very easily, clips together um, within, within minutes. Uh, to refit the lower bolster, slide it on the bottom fixings, push the clips in again. It's very, and then tighten up the screws. Very, very easy, very, very simple. Not worth putting on video, to be honest. Now, the next step for me then is to give it a test. Unfortunately, my car is laid up at the morning, a moment, so I might have to take it out, give it a bit of a warm up, and see if that works. Uh, I will actually be checking the climate control error codes. I'll show you how to do that in a future video, so look out for that. I'll put a uh, link here in the top right once I've done it. So section five then, easier cleaning. So after doing all that, I found possibly I could have just literally blown <laughs> compressed air directly into the grill without going through all the palaver, taking it all apart. I'm not sure it would have been quite as thorough, but I'm sure it would have took the, um, the dust off the actual um, sensor itself, which would, you know, 99.9% .9 of the job would have been done just by doing that. But like everything with Jaguar, it's off on a tangent, often some crazy um, uh, altered um, solution. Okay, section six then, bolster pocket feature, full access. So you may not be aware what the bolster pocket has this feature, so uh, I'll show you. Now, the bolster pocket is actually retained by a spring clip. And this spring clip is easily disengaged. If you depress the back of it, you can overcome the return on the spring. So it's like, it's like a 10 mil return there that holds it in and the whole pocket will fall out, which is not amazing. But if you've got lots of bits and pieces in the bottom, it's very, very difficult to get out because it's less than the size of your hand. So what Jaguar have enabled you to do is pop the whole thing upside down and all the things will drop on your on the floor. So very, very useful if you're a bit of a cleaning freak or you've got something very small uh, in the bottom of that pocket. To re-engage it, you basically just have to depress the clip again, get it past the uh, retaining tabs there and it's as easy as that. So a bit of a, bit of a funny feature of the pocket, you can see the clip but very useful if you've got something very small stuck in the bottom and you're struggling to get your very, very chubby hands in there. There you go. Six sections, center problems, removing, cleaning, refitting, the easier cleaning method, and that bit of an additional pocket feature. Hope you find that useful. If your air conditioning is not quite working as it should, it might be worth taking it apart, giving it all a blast with compressed air, or even just blasting it or trying to vacuum it out. Um, if you enjoyed the, ple the video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.